everyone and welcome to Miss Estrick Biology and in this video I'm going to be going through one of the most requested math skills and practical skills that I've had in a long time which I finally got around to doing so sorry it took so long and that is uncertainties this was actually a new math skill that was added to the spec when it was launched in 2015 and they didn't assess it for a couple of years and then when they did it was one of the worst answers maths questions and then since then they've put it in basically every single year because they've noticed students don't do very well on these questions so i finally created it for you here it is how you calculate uncertainty on a value percentage uncertainty uncertainty on multiple measurements and how you can reduce the uncertainty as well and if you do need more help with a-level biology don't forget to click subscribe because i upload videos every single week and in exam season it's twice a week so uncertainty in a-level biology then i'm going to go through with you the key things that come up in the practical handbook that you need to know but i have also linked that in the description so you can have a look at it in more detail so the first thing is knowing what are the sources of uncertainty and all measurements have some uncertainty which means what you have measured might not be completely accurate and when designing an experiment you should always select equipment and procedures that reduce the amount of uncertainty in your measurements. So the sorts of things you could do to reduce the uncertainty in a measurement is increase the resolution of the instrument used. So if you are using a measuring cylinder, or in this case I've got distance, a ruler, make sure you're using a ruler that can measure to at least millimeters and not just centimeters. And that is because when we get to the maths part, the uncertainty is half of the smallest increment at each end that you're measuring from. So if you're going to go to millimeters instead of centimeters, your uncertainty would be 0.5 of a millimeter instead of 0.5 of a centimeter. So you've reduced the uncertainty. More on that later though, when we come to talk about one judgment versus two judgments, which probably means not a lot right now, but keep watching and you'll find out about that. Then is the method. So taking repeated readings can also be used to reduce uncertainty. I'm going to get to that bit later on in this video as well, where we talk about how taking repeated readings affects the uncertainty. And then the size of increments available. So we've got an example here, whereas it's the size of the drops on a pipette could also have an impact. And we're also going to be looking at one extra way that you can reduce uncertainty by taking multiple combined measurements as well. So essentially that's your answer in short, but I'm going to be talking you through it in detail in each slide. So it should make sense as well as going on to the maths of how you calculate it. Now, here's one thing that I don't think many students are aware of, and that is what is the difference between taking a reading and taking a measurement? And this is what I meant by the single judgment or one judgment and two judgments. And when you calculate uncertainty, you need to be aware of whether you have just recorded a reading, which means it has a single judgment, or whether you've recorded a measurement, which means it has two judgments. So what I mean by that is readings, that is the term used to describe values which are found from a single judgment piece of equipment. So where you just have to read off one value. So for example, a thermometer, you're just reading the point that the liquid goes up to. And therefore you're only making one judgment where you're reading it off to see what value you have. And the uncertainty of a reading with one judgment is half of the smallest scale on that reading. So if your thermometer was going up by one degree at a time, your uncertainty on that reading would be 0.5 of a degree. So for example, if you're reading off a thermometer and each increment was worth one degree Celsius, that would mean that your uncertainty would be 0.5 degree Celsius. Now, alternatively, you have measurements, and this is the term used to describe values taken as the difference between two judgments or two places, and therefore you have two judgments. So, for example, measuring with a ruler, you're placing the start of the ruler at what you consider to be zero, and then you are recording up to a certain distance. And that means there are two points of uncertainty or two judgments because you had to make sure you positioned your ruler exactly at zero to start with and then you're reading off at a particular point as well. 
And when you have two judgments, we can have a look at this when we do our calculations for uncertainty. But that means you've got two points where you have 0.5 of the smallest increment is uncertainty. Or in other words, you're always going to have one of the smallest scale reading as your uncertainty. Again, I'm going to go through these examples with you. Before we do that, though, I just wanted to point out some piece of apparatus that would count as those that have one judgment, meaning you're taking a reading, versus those that have a measurement, which means you have two judgments. So a thermometer, because it's already got it all set up, so you're not having to measure zero, you're just reading up where it goes to. Same idea with the balance or the scales and measuring cylinder and pH meter. You're only taking one judgment. Whereas the ruler we talked about, you've got to position it in the correct place to start with, and then you're recording um, where it goes up to. Stopwatch, it's based on you pressing it to start and pressing it to stop as well. So here's how we do the maths then. The uncertainty in a reading. To work out the uncertainty in the reading of an instrument with one judgment is plus or minus half of the smallest division, which we said. So the uncertainty of a thermometer with the graduations of one degree C is 0.5 degrees C. That would be your uncertainty on the reading. And most thermometers are one degree C apart in terms of the graduation. So it's pretty much always going to be that for a thermometer. For a measurement, because it's two judgments, you are having to work out those two uncertainties. So the uncertainties of the placement of the zero of the ruler and the uncertainty of the point the measurement is taken from. And if the ruler measures to millimetres, which is probably what you're all using, then both ends of the ruler have a 0.5 millimetre scale division uncertainty. And therefore, if you add that uncertainty from both ends of the ruler, your uncertainty on the measurement would be plus or minus one millimetre. So just to show you what I mean by that, I've actually got a ruler that is going to one millimetre. That's what this one is showing you. At this point, we do have millimetres, but then this one does actually have divisions at 0.5 of a millimetre. So this one would have um, even less uncertainty. But even then, we can see I've had to judge where I placed the zero. So that's my uncertainty in the judgment at position zero. And then the uncertainty where I've positioned it, where I'm recording to the edge of this circle. And we can actually see that circle does fall between these two lines. And that's what we mean by uncertainty. So it has to be half of the smallest increment. This time, the smallest increment is 0.5 of a millimetre. So my uncertainty here is 0.25 plus 0.25. So my overall uncertainty on this measurement would be 0.5 of a millimetre. This one is measuring to millimetres and you can see the uncertainty in the start point here and then we've got the uncertainty in the judgment at the end of the measurement. In both cases, I mean that one I could have maybe shifted it along slightly so it'd be more in line but that's what we mean by our uncertainty in the measurement um, and then this one we might be a bit more in line as well but this one it would be um, 0.5 of a millimetre is the uncertainty at this end because it's half a millimetre and then 0.5 at this end so this one's total uncertainty on that measurement would be one millimetre. Now sometimes they might not let you know what instrument you're using so you don't know the resolution to be able to work out what is half of the smallest graduation and instead they might just give you a value and say um, this was recorded what is the uncertainty and if that's the case it will always be plus or minus one the last significant digit now let me just show you exactly what we mean by that so if you had an exam question where they stated that they'd recorded a value of 1660 milligrams then we can see the last significant figure here is at this position which is in the tens that's zero so that'd be the ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, but our last significant figure here is in the tens. And that would then mean that we've got an uncertainty of plus or minus 10 milligrams. Now it might actually be lower than that, but we cannot determine that without the details of the resolution. So this gives us an idea of what the highest level of uncertainty might be. Based on the fact that that's a zero, we can assume that maybe they couldn't record any lower or any more precise than the tens. Whereas if the exam question stated a value of 1,663, 
our last significant figure is now in the ones. We've got a three. So that would mean our uncertainty would be plus or minus one milligram. So that's how you do your uncertainty. If they don't tell you what instrument was used and instead they just give you the value. Multiple instances of measurement. So I did say there'd be another way that I'd talk you through that you can reduce the uncertainty through changing your method. And one way involves using multiple instances. And what we mean by that is you'll take multiple measurements in one go because that would mean you only have one round of uncertainty to consider for all of those measurements. So in this example, this is the example that AQA gave. They said if you were measuring the thickness of several leaves piled up together and you measured those all together at the same time rather than individually, instead of measuring each leaf individually, then the uncertainty of each measurement will be the uncertainty of the whole measurement divided by the number of leaves. So in this case, um, it'd be whatever the, I don't think I actually told you it was 10, but they did in the example they gave. They said that they measured 10 leaves, they piled 10 leaves on top of each other and measured the thickness of those 10 leaves. Now that would mean we'd have the uncertainty at the point, the two points of measuring, because it would be with a ruler. But instead of doing that 10 times for all of those leaves, which would all have those levels of uncertainty in, we've measured them all together and instead we could just do the uncertainty for that one measurement and then divide our value by 10 because there were 10 leaves. Okay, so this is because the percentage uncertainty of the thickness of a single leaf is the same as the percentage uncertainty for the thickness of multiple leaves. So that's why that helps. And this is the example I was just saying. So if the thickness of 10 leaves, if when they measured it, was 2.10 millimetres, then if we were told we had a uncertainty of 0.1, then the mean thickness of one leaf would be divide that by 10 because there were 10 leaves so we divide that by 10 but we can also divide our uncertainty by 10 so that's how this reduces the uncertainty because we've now gone from having 0.1 and I haven't actually said how they calculated that they just told us that as a fact they just said that is the uncertainty for this example so we've got an uncertainty of 0.1 but because we have to divide that by 10 to find out the thickness of the leaf we can also divide the uncertainty by 10 and now our uncertainty is 10 times smaller. So that's how multiple instances of measurements, meaning measure them all at the same time, if you can, for whatever example you have, that would reduce the uncertainty. Repeated measurements, we said at the start, is another way to reduce uncertainty. So with many readings, it's also possible to identify if there are anomalies, which in some cases you can remove the anomalies. Um, but sometimes it's not going to be appropriate to remove those anomalies or outliers before you calculate the mean. And in particular for biology, sometimes it's incredibly important that you leave the outliers in. So that's often the case in ecology because we want to know exactly the effects something is having on all animals. So even if it's just one in a hundred are affected in that way, you want to know. Same with drug trials. If they're looking at how effective a drug is or the side effects of a drug, even if it was only one or two people in the thousand that they sampled, you want to know what that effect is because scaled up for the entire population, that could be a lot of people that are going to be harmed or negatively affected by the drug. So often we don't remove the anomalies for that reason in biology. So if we have repeated measurements and you can't remove those anomalies, the uncertainty can be calculated by finding half the range of the measured values. And this is the example that AQA gave in the workbook. They've told you they did three repeats of the measurements and they've told you what the distances were. So if we want to know what the uncertainty is in these repeated measurements, then we look at what the range is. So the smallest value and the largest value. So we've got a range of 0.10. And we said it's half of that range. So that means our mean distance, we'd calculate the mean of all of those, which is 1.26, plus or minus 0.05. That is our uncertainty on repeated measurements. Now, I've seen that come up a couple of times in the exam. And each time that has come up, they gave you this statement. They told you that the uncertainty can be calculated by finding half the range of the measured values. So that leads me to assume they would do it again if it was to come up. However, 
it's worthwhile knowing it's helpful for you in the exact in the exam to have an awareness of that Percentage uncertainties, this is probably a bit more common. So the percentage uncertainty in a measurement is calculated using this formula. So the uncertainty, which we've gone through how you'd work that out on a measurement, divided by the value, whether that's your reading or measurement, and then multiplied by 100 because it's a percentage. If you want to know the percentage uncertainty in a repeated measurement, then it would be the uncertainty divided by the mean value times 100. So for example, for this one, it'd be your uncertainty here divided by your mean value times 100. So that's how you'd calculate the percentage uncertainty for a single value versus multiple readings in which you've calculated a mean. The last thing I wanted to make you aware of is this table again. This is from the AQA handbook and it tells you how you could combine uncertainties because if you did work out the uncertainty of one measurement and then another measurement, but you had to combine those together, these are the different ways that they said you could calculate it or the different examples that might come up. Um, and I think this top one is the main one that I've seen come up where it's adding or subtracting the values. So you work out what your um, uncertainties are for each individual measurement and then they said this is how you'd add it together and they've got some examples there. So that is it for the math skill and practical skill all about uncertainties. I hope you found it helpful and if you did make sure you click that subscribe button and stick around for all of my latest videos which during exam season is twice a week. Outside of exam season it's every Sunday. <laughs>